So I got a chance to uh, listen to uh, to your interview with uh, with Graham. Uh, again, full name, Graham. Graham Denton. And, and it's not an interview, it's a ZZ Talk feature. I'm sorry, ZZ Talk feature where, mo but real quickly, most features have obviously not included the uh, the second Z. It's been the first Z. It's just, Z Zeno is an animal. He just, he sees interviews that he wants to do, he goes and gets them, so, and he's actually phenomenal at interviews, so. So uh, great Thank job, you. man, on all these interviews so far. They've been really good. Uh, so your recap, of course, was, was Graham Denton. And Graham Denton was talking to you about, or ZZ feature was with Graham Denton, and it was a, a feature on Native American, Native American issues, Native American rights. Um, if you haven't had a chance to listen to that, please go back and listen to it, because it actually is a really good interview. He writes a lot of good points that actually have, to me, drawn a lot of parallels with Latino Americans, right? So one of the things that, um, the first thing that popped out to me, right, was the part where he talks about how he was, a, him and his mother are card-carrying members of, I think he said Cherokee tribe? Um, no, so, the, uh, oh, damn. No, um, no, I wish you had told me you were going to bring this up. I, I had it written somewhere. Um, it's all right, and, his tribe. The tribe that he, the, the, the Native American tribe that his, his family belongs to. Right? I think Navajo, uh, Maybe or Navajo, Navajo. Some, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Well, he, and what that automatic, now, now the way he said it was kind of basically that that was kind of a little bit of a, was that, he basically said that was a little bit Native American, like, implemented and American implemented, or was it mostly, or he basically said all of it was American implemented. You mean to have the card carrying? Yeah. Part? It has to, I, I like, think it's America to sign it. Yeah, so it's like a to be federally recognized. Yeah, yeah. So instantly that reminded me of a parallel. I don't know if you remember this law that was trying to be passed in Arizona. I believe it was Arizona, where they were trying to pass a law where a police officer could ask someone who looks illegal mm. their status. Basically, profiling. Right? Profiling, right? It was legal profiling. Basically, that's what it was. It didn't pass. Because the thing is, though, it's actually unconstitutional. You can't ask somebody status because I can literally, you can ask me my status. I can refuse to uh, to answer, say, I choose not to answer. I choose to plead, uh, to stay silent, right? Because that that's, again, that's basically in, uh, against the, uh, was it Fourth Amendment? Yeah, Fourth Amendment, right? Um, process. Like pleading, like not. Um, no, no, I'm not pleading the Fifth. The Fifth Amendment is uh, against self-incrimination. Uh, due process is the Fourth Amendment. Uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't looked at my pocket bill of rights lately. No, you haven't looked at it. Dennis Kucinich used to walk, uh, carry it. That's why. That's the reason why I wanted to vote for him um, way back when. So, I thought anyways, Dennis Kucinich uh, was the size of the bill of rights. I'm sorry, that was cheap. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Kucinich. <laughs> hey, look, Mr. Kucinich, to me, you're still awesome. I still have your. I think I still have your um, his. Um, bumper sticker that I got a long time ago. But it's the 5th and 14th Amendment, actually. So the 5th and 14th Amendment allow you to, right? So that's, uh, it's kind of against that. Now, now we could definitely get somebody to, a lawyer to speak on that, to kind of give us more information on that. But it's the 5th uh, the, the and the 14th Amendment. That, that's basically, so it was the 5th so, Amendment, I'm sorry. It's so 5th so is for self-incrimination, 14th is what about service? Um, denial. Denial. I think that of, one's denial. Denial yes. of, um, um, your nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. So you're okay. denying, depriving somebody of their liberty. Okay. Right. That, that I think that's what they were basically and doing. And just it just didn't it just didn't hold up. But this is way back when it was George Bush's time. So I can only imagine if they try to pass that during Donald Trump time with a you know with something that we'll talk about in a few minutes about the Supreme Court being you know. Um, stack now against uh, against um, rights because they're trying to stack it to the to the um, to to a conservative court. But anywho, that that's the first parallel that I got for the Latino community and the and the Native American. It's kind of that just that instantly came to my mind about how they used to do stuff like that, right? Um, I'm pretty sure they the same thing with uh with, they've done that with African Americans probably probably post slavery. You know, um, that's how they did the well even. Um... We don't even have to go back that far. If you want to talk about um, trying to put laws in place where they allow to just profile and then like make sure that you have certain identification, stop and frisk in New York. They, oh God, you're right. And guess who was the, guess who started that? Yeah. Bloomberg. 
they literally could just like look at you and say, hey, um, I think you look suspicious. I'm going to frisk you. And, and it was legal. So, yeah. Hey, I think you look minority <laughs> enough. I need to. Fr- yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you don't even have to go back to slavery. That's a good point. That sucks that you can't. You, I really wish it was like we could go all the way. We have to go all the way back to slavery. But no, we only have to go back to the early 2000s. So, um, so anyways, so that was the first one. And then um, the other one that I thought about was colonization assimilation, where he was talking about how people who assimilate, um, they kind of get looked at within the native community as falling into the colonizers, like, you know, views or whatever. Yeah. And that instantly made me think of Latinos not speaking Spanish. Yeah. Like how a lot of times... Like me, I won't lie, I'm guilty of this when I when I see, like I have in the past made fun of Latinos who don't speak Spanish, despite, because the fact is I've been made up for the fact that my Spanish is horrible, yeah. you know, so it's kind of like, you know. You don't have the dialect, or you don't have the proper pronunciations. The, exactly, like a, I don't have the proper pronunciation, I don't know all the rules, I don't know how to write it. Thank God yeah. for um, for autocorrect in Spanish, though. Yeah. That's kind of helped me out. In, in, but, in Nigeria, they call um, foreigners or, or people not, not foreigners, but Nigerians who maybe speak with a foreign accent, so they call them Ajebata. You know, so uh, every, every... Would you suffer from that? Like, do you, is... Uh, I mean, when, your... like, yeah, when I, went, when I went there, I heard it. And also, some Nigerians here, like when I was in the African Student Association in West Georgia, um, I, I guess I wasn't as in tune with Nigeria mm-hmm. as the rest of them. Um, I got that, but I mean, it wasn't to the point where I felt like and sort of like oh, I'm gonna jump off the bridge okay. or anything, but um, so, but, but but one one real quick thing though, he there was a term that Graham used that I'd never heard before that like apple. I was like, sure, yeah. When he said apple, it was like red on the outside, white on the inside. Well, wow. you remember how last time I talked about um on my block and how um certain you know because I was talking about how there's white writers who do um Latino shows or whatever, but one term that I hadn't heard that I actually I heard on that show. But I hadn't heard it before, but actually it turns out that actually some people say that it is true, is coconut for um for Latinos. Brown on the outside, white on the inside. Like so that it's just kinda like all of us end up having to deal with that kind of stuff. You know? So so yeah. So um so did you hear what I said about Mm -hmm. all of us Uh, happen to deal with that stuff, yeah. Yeah, the same same for us it's it's Oreo for black people. Oh yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then um what was I gonna say? Um I loved what he said about we have to hold people to a, the, the society to a higher standard by attempting to identify with the most marginalized people. Like that was just, that was, that was phenomenal. That that's basically a summarization of what a lot of us are feeling when we're going out here and doing these protests and, and demanding change. And, and that, that was in response to the question I asked him about, you know, it, it seems like, um, I think how I phrased it was that it seems like if anyone's um, social media feed is representative of the idea of you know, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, it's probably his, right? Because he's always talking about, you know, things about um, Black Lives Matter. He's talking about, uh, it was, I think it was, it was, his page was one of the first pages I saw about the hysterectomies that were supposedly happening yeah. in ICE detentions. Which, um, like, he, he's, he talks about all these different groups and all that stuff. And I asked him, uh, does he ever feel like, because the one that he should probably identify with the most is the Native American issues. Does he ever feel like, you know, there, there's so much emphasis on all these stuff going on with these other groups and there isn't any emphasis on Native American stuff? Is there a level of, um, uh, what's the word? Um, uh, a tear? A tear? Yeah, like, yeah you know, or, 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 or I feel or like there's a tear of, I'm feeling these like, people, you know, why don't they, why don't they care about, you know, my issues? Yeah. And that's where he went into that, you know, the, he, he feels like you you have to look out for like marginalized groups everywhere. Like, or, or and they that's be. actually why I have been on, I don't, like, you see my page. I talk about Black Lives Matter all the time. Um, I, I go into different, different things that just seem you know, um, seem wrong for other particular groups because that is one of the reasons why, right? Because I don't see Latino issues being at the forefront as much as they should be. So me as being an ally to Black Lives Matter, me being, I'd be an ally to, um, to, to Native American issues, right? Being an ally to Asian American issues, 
being an ally to those allows for me to be able to say, hey, look, I'm with you, I'm fighting with you, but also, hey, look at this. Look and see what's going on yeah. here, right? Yeah. Like, let's bring a coalition of all of our issues because all of our issues need to be answered, right? Yeah. So it's just because I've always felt – it's always – now, first of all, Latinos are a little bit different because the fact is that we've also always – and I think Asian Americans are the same way. We've also had, we've always had a separate culture from standard America because we voluntarily came here. Right. Like, yes. And then so, I, I was, I was going to jump on, on that too, about the fact that um, for, for like native Americans, for instance, a lot of the culture has been stripped away. You know how he talks about um, the almost the forced assimilation. Um, yeah. Cases where they they would do forced adoptions and like pull people from which the again they're doing now with Latinos up at the border. Right. So 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 that that was going on with Native Americans, but there also there are a lot of African Americans who don't know where in Africa they come from. Uh, a lot of these places that they supposedly that the genealogy goes back to, a lot of these countries didn't exist when they left you know home. And so it is truly foreign to them. There is no culture to cling to. Whereas, you know, um, Latino Americans, at least they can point to something. At least they yeah. can say, you know, my, whether it's a generation ago or a couple of generations ago, come from Mexico, they come from Nicaragua, they come, you know. So at well, least they were born in they, California, California, when California was, was Mexico. Right, right. So at, at least there is some tie to, to the roots there. Uh, how that makes a difference, I'm not sure, but... It's it, at least it's there. Great point. So, uh, so <laughs> as far as as far as sorry guys, I had a technical difficulty, but Zeno made a great point. So, anyways, um, one thing that I also wanted to add to was the fact of w where he talked about context, right? Like sometimes somebody could say the wrong thing at the right time in regards to the, he was talking about the tomahawk shop and stuff like that. And it actually reminded me of, so Home Depot created a wall at a music, Latin, Latin music festival, which was around the time that Trump had. But the thing is though, I could tell what they were trying to do with the wall, just basically what they said. They were trying to basically like write down something that represents you and just post it it's not really a wall it's a really yeah. it's a mural that's it the way it was a trump it. wall yeah but at the end of the day i thought it was overblown honestly i really did just when somebody when somebody sent it to me and i was like all right this look there are times where people should not be offended by certain things like it's just like you gotta you got to understand that sometimes there is issues where you need to be offended. And there's sometimes there's like, all right, you're overthinking this. I felt like that was overthinking it, but at that time it was the wrong context. Yeah. Like, I think it was the, sometimes it was something. Sorry. There, there's a delay between us. So um, that's why it comes up as interruption sometimes. Um, I was going to say that I think sometimes we as a culture um, seek outrage, you know, where there is none to be had. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to dive too much into this, but *Tropic Thunder* is a big example of that. The movie *Tropic Thunder*. Um, I think the Robert Downey Jr. outrage ten years after the fact is ridiculous. But anyway, sorry. Go yeah, on. Yeah. Well, not only that, but the funny part was that there was no outrage within the black community um, over that, right? But there was outrage from the handicap community about the Ben Stiller character, right? Because mm, they felt that one was because you could tell that there was one where one was ridicule of. A certain disability while the other one was at that time it was no it was just robert Downey jr playing a um uh what's it called um is it, method is, actor. yes yeah and and actually so i rewatched it recently and it's 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 great it's actually a really good funny as hell. um yeah. and it's but it's ridiculing um hollywood's you know like they could cast a black guy for this role but instead, they went and got this Australian guy just because he's a method actor. And, yeah. yeah, he's like, uh, like Daniel Day Lewis type. They went and cast That's what I was gonna say. I feel really like they were killing. mocking more Daniel Day Lewis than any like an actor like Daniel Day Lewis or even Ethan Hawke because Ethan Hawke's a little bit of a method actor too. This is they're mo they were just mocking those type of actors, and then it's kind of like um, what was oh when um when HBO Max came out, right? Remember they took out Gone with the Wind. 
Mm. And like mm. I told, I told all my friends, uh, all my friends, and every black friend that I had agreed with me. There was no black person outraged about Gone with the Wind being on an HBO Max. I didn't. I don't know. I know. I know of Gone with the Wind. I yeah. don't know enough about it to be outraged about it. Uh, and yeah. even then, I understand that it's a, it, it's a product of its time. I mean, like, let's chill out. About and that. then, and then, one final thing with uh, with with the Graham interview was like, I just kind of pimp, I kind of touched on it a little bit was the forced adoption where he was talking about how his mother was basically forced adopted, which is still happening today. You know, there's there's kids being separated from their parents. In fact, there was one case where the mom sued. And the judge ruled in favor of the white family, saying that she basically abandoned the kid when she got deported. Yeah, something along those lines. So it's just it's a, it's just a lot of dirty shit that this government has done um, to people uh, POCs um, and Native Americans are people of color. Um, Latinos are people of color, right? By, BIPOC is the term which I didn't know before, but it's like Black Indian uh, Indian being Native American and uh, people of color. So. Yeah, so it's just kind of like that's just like it, it's just like it's a really great interview. You did a great job. That was a great. That was a great conversation. Um, definitely something to go back on and want to read up on. So great interview. Um, like I said, it resonated with me as a Latino in regard. I've always kind of felt a little bit of a resonate. Uh, kind of felt like Native American issues have resonated with me as a Latino, just because obviously you know I'm an Aztec warrior. Like uh, the guy. Well, most, there is that tie, right? I mean. I... <laughs> Yeah, Latinos are, are the closest. Even though I think Americans. we're more Mayan than Aztec, if I'm not mistaken. I think uh, well, yeah, I, I don't know like the like complete tie back, but I know that you know the most like uh, Latin country, countries. It's usually a mixture of Native Americans and then European Caucasians, and then that's yeah. where you have some like you know in Brazil you have like in the soccer team you have some that look definitely more uh, indigenous. Like yeah. uh, and actually that's the I in BIPOC, not Indian, indigenous. Um, you have players like Neymar, uh, who looks like indigenous, and then you have other players like, uh, well, even though he's retired now, but like Kaka, who looks like a white dude, yeah, just with a yeah. bit of a tan. So and Pele, who's black. And Pele's black, exactly. Yeah, so this is the you know the the, the slaves that came through and all that. So good job, sir. I'm bringing it back to soccer. <laughs> Always got it. Always. At least once an episode. Um, All right. But anyways, uh, great you. interview. Guys, if you got a chance, go back and listen to it. Yeah. All right. All right. So.